This video is part of a series in which we describe how to implement a simple microcontroller core in System Verilog. In this video, I'll be going over the timing and the Verilog code for the no op instruction, the indirect jump instruction, and the conditional branch instruction. Okay, now I want to take a look at the no op instruction. It sends the current value of the program counter to the memory unit so that on the next cycle we'll be fetching the opcode of the instruction that follows the no op instruction and it increments the program counter and remains in the fetch state. These are just exactly our default so its implementation is pretty trivial. And notice that in this state the program counter will be the address of the byte following the opcode byte. Uh, now let's take a look at the indirect jump instruction. It's very similar. It takes the value that's in the XY register and jumps to that location. So it will send the value of the XY register to the memory unit and so on the next cycle the target instruction will be fetched. And it also loads the program counter with the value of XY plus 1 this is the address of the byte that follows the opcode byte of the target instruction. So now let's take a look at what the indirect jump looks like in Verilog. And we see that we are supplying to the memory as an address the current value of the XY register. And we're setting up so that when we load the PC on the rising edge of the next cycle, we'll load it with the current value of the XY register plus 1. Now I also wanted to show the code for the no op instruction and you can see I've got it commented out but you can see that it is exactly the same as the default namely it doesn't really do anything. So um, I tried a couple of things. I tried uh, compiling this uh, Verilog code with the lattice semiconductor software both with and without these comments here. And there was a surprising difference. Um, without the comments, the, um, it, the system used 17 additional logic cells. And I was surprised at how much this was. I would think that since both these cases are the same, that, and, and since this is the default, that um, it really would recognize that this was just really the same case. Uh, so I was surprised. Uh, it turns out that putting these comment, uh, comments in here actually does make a pretty big difference, and this was a bit of a surprise. Next, I want to look at the conditional branch instruction. Let's review that instruction. The opcode byte is followed by two additional bytes that give the target address, and there's a 4-bit field within the opcode byte that indicates which condition we want to be testing. So we will look at the value of the four condition code registers and we'll either take or not take the jump based on the values. And there are a number of different conditions we can test and these are given down here. Uh, for example, if we want to test for less than or equal, then we would use 0011 in this uh, field here. And if the condition code bits are set accordingly, uh, presumably they would be set by the previous ALU instruction or compare instruction. So if the, the bits are set to indicate that A was less than or equal to B, then we would go ahead and take the jump. Otherwise, th the branch is not taken and we proceed to the instruction following the branch instruction. Uh, by the way, uh, l this less than or equal is a signed comparison. Uh, if we want an unsigned comparison, we would use a slightly different condition. And the assembly language programmer would write less than or equal u all as one token to indicate that we want to test for the, un the unsigned less than or equal condition. Okay, so now let's take a look at the, the not taken situation. There are two situations, one where the branch is not taken and one where it is taken. And we have different timing in these two cases. So if we look at the taken situation, we see that the instruction will take three cycles. And in the not taken situation, the instruction will only take a single cycle. If the branch is not taken, we basically don't bother reading the following two bytes from memory. We just ignore the target address altogether. 
and proceed to the instruction after the branch instruction. So within this first cycle, whether it's taken or not taken, we will examine the condition. Of course, we don't know until this point uh, what instruction we have. So at this point, we examine the condition and determine whether the branch is to be taken or not taken. And that will determine whether we go into the next fetch state if it's not taken, or whether we go into uh, the execute state. So let's look at the not taken situation. Here we just increment the uh, program counter. Okay, we're going to increment it by uh, three. Basically, uh, what's going on here is that the in the conditional branch instruction is at locations n, n plus one, and n plus two. And so the following instruction begins at n plus three. So we will take the current value of the program counter, add two to it to skip over the two bytes, and supply that to the memory unit to fetch the opcode of the instruction following the branch instruction. And we will load the PC with n plus four. So we'll basically take the current value of the program counter and add three to it. So in the case where the branch is taken, well, we do something different. We send a different value to the memory. Uh, the default value is just n plus 1, the program counter. And we will fetch the most significant byte. And then in the following cycle, we'll fetch the least significant byte of the target. And then um, we'll, we are set up in this um, cycle right here to uh, take the jump sort of like we did in the indirect jump instruction. So on the first cycle, the fetch cycle, we're supplying the program counter to the memory unit. And on the next cycle, we get out the MSB. We're going to need to save that. Uh, so on this cycle here, we'll set up the control signals to store what comes out of the memory into the MSB register. And then on this cycle, we'll also be sending the new program counter n plus 2 to the memory unit. And then on the following cycle here, we get out the second byte of the address. And now at this point, we've got the most and the least significant bytes of the target address. So we put those together and supply that to the memory unit. And then we will get out the uh, opcode of the target instruction on the next cycle. And also, we need to load the program counter. And so we override the default and load it with the target address plus one. OK, so now let's take a look at the Verilog code. Uh, here we are in our always calm construct. I want to scroll back up here and talk about this code that I haven't discussed yet. Um, we've got this take the jump signal. It's a one bit signal that we're going to be setting uh, with this uh, case statement right here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the 4-bit condition code field in the instruction. And that's what we're doing right here. And then we're going to case on that. So these constants are equated to the 4-bit values that uh, are given right here. So for example, the signed less than or equal is uh, 0011, and the unsigned less than or equal is 0111. And so if we go to, let's see, the uh, unsigned less than or equal, we see that we are setting take the jump to the value of the carry or with the zero flag. So that would be those would be true if and only if we have a less than or equal situation with two when comparing two unsigned numbers. Now we also have these uh, other signals less than signed and less than or equal signed, and then we uh, use those here as well. Um, I'm not going to go over the actual conditions and how they relate to uh, signed and unsigned comparisons. That is covered in the document that uh, describes and specifies the eCore instruction set architecture. So you can uh, look elsewhere for, for that. But I do want to point out that we have one condition down here that's called true. And that just sets take the jump to one. And we have one that's not defined, and for that, we're also going to set take the jump to one. So, OK, now let's go down to the uh, fetch state, and let's scroll down to where we have the uh, branch instruction. So here we deal with a branch. And you see that uh, the first thing we do in this cycle 
is determine whether we're going to take the jump or not. So um, if we are taking the jump, we will be just uh, proceeding normally into the execute state. We need to fetch the byte of the target instruction, uh, and the, we fetch the most significant byte first. So as we've seen in other instructions, we just proceed to the execute state to fetch the next byte. But if we are not taking the jump, that is, uh, if take the jump is false, then we're going to um, go back to the fetch state. And the only thing that's slightly different is we're going to skip over the next two bytes. So by default, the next PC is always PC plus one, but here we're going to add three to it. And for the address to, that we provide to the memory, we're going to provide PC plus 2. This is a combinational signal that uh, I computed up above. I'm not going to bother. I could have just written out PC plus 2 like this here, but uh, we use it in a couple of different places. So in an attempt to save add uh, hardware, I have just computed the addition once and then used it in multiple places. OK, so that. Um, takes us care of uh, if we don't take the jump and we proceed on to the fetch state. But in the case where we are taking the jump, we move to the execute state. So if I scroll down to where we deal with the execute state and to where we deal with the branch, we see that what we're going to do is, well, we're going to move into the execute to state next. So we set next state and uh, we are going to save what comes out of the memory in our MSB register. So we need to raise the write enable line for the MSB register. And otherwise, the defaults, that is reading the next byte, uh, are adequate. So now let's go down to the execute2 state. Um, here's execute2. And if we scroll down to where we handle the branch instruction, uh, we see that at this point, we are affecting the jump. We're supplying to the memory an address that's made of the value that's saved in the MSB register with the least significant byte, which is just now coming out of the memory. So we build our memory address. This is the target address. And so we supply that to the memory unit to fetch the opcode of the target instruction. And we're also going to load into the program counter on the rising edge this target instruction, this target address plus one. So we see that going on here. And then we'll proceed into the fetch state and execute the target instruction next. Okay, well, that wraps it up for our discussion of the no op, the indirect jump, and the conditional branch instructions. In the next video, we'll be talking about some instructions that modify the stack. I will look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for watching.